armor. That was close. Live from the virtual Charlotte Motor Speedway, the journey of the National Sim Racing League continues. We are at America's Home for Racing, and tonight it is the longest race of the season. We welcome you to the World 350. 234 
grueling laps around this 1.5 mile dazzling quad oval where drivers tonight will be going full throttle around Charlotte. Good evening friends, Marty Sakala here with you. Glad you could join us tonight for live action of the National Sim Racing League. If you missed us last week, we were at the Circuit of the Americas for a long 46 lap road course spectacular and Ashton Crowder won three races in a row and had a dominant stages one and two, but then in stage three, he had to fight off Brennan Poole and Crowder took home the victory. Get you last race's results here for you. It was Crowder taking the win. Brennan Poole second. Dylan Clark third. Nick Boyd fourth. Russ Boysford fifth. Alan Crowell sixth. Mark Sikosi seventh. Kayla McCarthy eighth. Briggs Swope ninth. And Aiden Bearline finished in tenth. Here are how your player playoffs currently look at the moment. We know Josh Susi three wins at the moment. Ashton Crowder has four wins. Mark Sikosi, Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy, Alan Crowell, Mark Cook. Excuse me, not Mark Cook, uh, not Alan Crowell, uh, Otto Cruz, and James Morris. They've got there are seven different winners so far this season. Eighth currently in points is Briggs Swope. Ninth, Josh Aaron. Tenth, Jeremy Jimmy Barr. Eleventh, Justin Cope. Twelfth is Justin Diltz. And thirteenth, uh, Jeremy Edwards. Fourteenth, William Farmer. F and fifteenth in points, Brennan Poole with 237, 16th Tom Perra with 233. Right now the first four out at the moment, John Crow has 230, 18th, 18th is Dean Webb with 198, 19th Kyle Milliken with 191, and 20th Daniel Menzies with 184 points. Break down the Charlotte Motor Speedway for you at home. 24 degrees in the turns, 5 degrees on the straightaways. This, this track seats 171,000 around the 1.5 mile D-shaped oval. Built Hi, more than Thank you four decades ago, drivers still love to race at this quad oval. Charlotte just a bumper behind in the pinnacle of NASCAR racing. I've been there before, and it's such a brilliant track. Set to go racing here at Charlotte. Let's give you the starting lineup. 26 drivers are set to take the green tonight. Tyler Isley and William Farmer on the front row. Row 2, Josh Susie and Mark Sikosi. Row 3, Daniel Menzies and Tyler Rush. Row 4 is Alan Crowell and Justin Cope. Rounding, excuse me, rounding out the top 10, Brian Preslar and Mark Cook. Row 6, Ryan Broderick and John Crow. Row 7, Tom Para and Briggs Swope. Row 8, Jimmy Barr and Nick Smart. Row 9, Justin Diltz, Dylan Clark, and Row 10, Josh Aaron, and Nick Boyd. Here's how the rest of the field looks. Kayla McCarthy, Ed Fowler, Terry Marinaro, Aiden Bearline, Paul Smirado, and Kyle Milliken start in 25th and 26th. Giving you a weather forecast for tonight, 80 degrees. The air temp, the track temp is at 81 degrees. Remember, this is a track that you will expect to see Wide open, full throttle race. And then once the tires get worn out tonight, then you'll see the drivers start to let off the let off the gas primarily on the entries of the corners. Stages end at laps 55 and 110. Each driver with six sets of tires tonight. And while we are at it, as we get set to go racing, just waiting for a couple of more drivers. Let us know where you were watching from and who you're rooting for tonight. Racer Girl 13 back in, rooting for Aiden Bearline. Bearline starting in position number 24. 24. Field ready to roll off. Let's get some final words of wisdom from our radio. Yeah. Field starts to roll off. A lot of drivers to watch out for tonight, specifically when you come to one and a half mile tracks. It's the KTS drivers you have to watch closely. Tyler Sorry, Isley. My bad. On the pole, Josh Susi starting in third position. 
Kayla McCarthy, though, starting from the rear of the field tonight. So Kayla McCarthy is not taking the green, from what we know of, so he's going to be helping out Josh. She's going to help out Josh Susie and Tyler Isley. Tyler Rush also a part of the team. Rush starting from position number six tonight. Twenty-three drivers strong, set to take the green flag. Here they come into turns three and four. As we like to say each and every week, race fans, it's time to strap in and hold on tight because these men are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. Off of turn number four, Tyler Isley and William Farmer, two of the fast ones in this series strong, ready to take the field of green. We are set to go, race fans, and it is show time from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Isley, Susie, work together in turn number one. Starts to be single fire. The low side going to be very key here. And then when you get to the exits of the corners, you want to make sure you're on the high side of the straightaways with the 550 package. Isley leading Susie second, third is Farmer, fourth Menzies. Alan Crowell rounds out the top five. Lap one is in the books. Isley leads. Here comes Sikosi trying to look on the outside of Alan Crowell in the battle for fifth position. One driver on his way out. Briggs Swope starting from the pits. Josh Susi working with Tyler Isley early on. The teammates backs up Farmer. A couple of drivers moving all the way up top. Mark Sikosi nearly scrapes the wall. Look out there. That got very close. Side by side now with Tyler Rush. That is for six. Sikosi, I think, going to fade back just a little bit early on as the sun is setting here at Charlotte. Whoa, look out there, Ryan Broderick. All the way below the apron, battling Brian Preslar for 10th position. Mark Cook currently the quickest lap in the number 88. Let's ride on board with him and see if he is dealing with any glare in turns one and two. Doesn't look to be the case, but when he's up, got that rear view mirror, that sun reflects on the rear view, and that could be key big time tonight in this early part of the race. Then when the sun starts to officially set, when we're getting into the darker hours of tonight, then that could be something to watch out for very closely. A lot of drivers working together early on. Tyler Isley is at the train of this line, at the front of this line in the caboose. Have to go back over to the driver of the 18, John Crow, in the 12th position. Driver's trying to find a way to look to the inside. You see Tyler Rush trying to do so in that number 27. And he's got away on Alan Crowell. Oh, Rush, hang on. Into the turf. And he saves it. Sorry, Tyler. Apologizes to Tyler Rush for that. Rush falls all the way back to 15. Let's see how bad the damage is on the 27. Definitely sustainable on the right side. We're trying to find a good shot that can show us. We'll see it right here. Look at this right side. The fenders tended in for a moment, got some scrapes on it. Falls back to 21st, but the same time of the way that train's going while they're playing conservative. Maybe a good idea for Rush to drop to the back early on here. That got very close. Let's go to the front because we got a battle for the race lead. That's actually a battle for second. William Farmer inside on Josh Susi. Farmer can't take that runner up spot as they're side by side. Isley gets a gap opened up in car number 17. So Susi runs second, Farmer third, Justin Cope fourth, Mark Sikosi rounds out the top five. Look at that glare, going to be an issue 
in stage one the entirety, that is for sure. Alan Crowell after getting up in the wall early round. We'll take a look off of turn four and see if he's got any damage. Rear end damage just a little bit. Mark Cook's got some left side damage early on. Not sure what that came from though. Take a look here and there is definitely some good right side damage on the Rowdy Energy number 54. So Crowell dropping back to ninth early on, still in that train. That's Brian Preslar behind in the number 67. Mark Sikosi trying to figure something out on Justin Cope in the battle for fourth position. Ducking all the way down low, Daniel Menzies just taps the apron for just a moment. I worked with Menzies earlier on this week, just hopping on in into a regular practice session, and he does really well keeping up with these KTS drivers or any of the drivers specifically that use the Speed Demon setup package. Menzies, I think, uses the setup by himself, but here's the thing. He's caught on the low side off of turn number two, not where he wants to be. And on the outside, Ryan Broderick. Ding, ding, ding. Remember, those two have had some history in the past couple of weeks on the ovals. This season, so you may want to watch that very closely as here comes Mark Cook. Now gets a run up to the inside. That's for seventh. Biggest mover out after the first 10 laps is going to be, I shouldn't say going to be, but it is currently number 05 of Ed Fowler, up eight spots, started in 22nd. He is up to 14th. The second biggest mover is Terry Marinaro in the 33, starting from 23rd. He is up seven spots to 16. Lincoln really bad. I don't know if anybody else sees it. Just cause a mayhem back here. Tyler Rush reporting a blank on Aiden Bearline. Yeah, control. Keep an eye on number 13. Blank him pretty good. Justin Diltz agrees with that. We'll check and see if Bearline continues the blank. That's something you don't really want early on, especially if you're Justin Diltz. Bearline may let some drivers go early. This is in the back of the pack, too, so keep that in mind. As Jimmy Barr tries to look inside on Tyler Rush, Barr washes up the track just a moment out half a groove, and there you see the blank from Aiden Bearline. So race control's watching that closely up in air traffic control again tonight is Chris Lynn. Changing position here. Oh, man! Ryan Broderick now happy of the way Mark Cook was racing him. Cook must have gotten tight in turns one or two or something. And Mark Cook lets him go. Battle for sixth position on the track. Both drivers get... Wash up tight on the track. They both get the wall. Cook is loose off of turn four. Does the pass in the grass, Earnhardt style. And lets Menzies go by for seventh. Remember early on as, as these tires start to wear out, drivers are going to have to let off just a tad bit on the entry and then they can go back to full throttle. And then keep doing whatever they want to do. I've noticed that if you try to keep it wide open in the corners using the low groove, that's when you start to uh, feel your car get tight. Let's ride with John Crow. See that has it off in just a moment and bam, right back on the throttle. You can see it here in the throttle. Look at the dashboard, bottom right of your screen. You can see what he lets off. Let's off just for a split second, then bingo, back in it. Open the door up, though, for Dylan Clark to take away 12th. Alan Crowell and Nick Smart side by side. That's for 10th. Nick Smart, this is his debut with the National Sim Racing League. Started in 16th early on, making some good headway. Good battle happening on the track. They're four seconds, though, behind the race leader, and that is a huge pack in turns number three and four. They're approaching Brian Preslar, Mark Cook, Ryan Broderick, and Dylan Menzies. Meanwhile, the top five... Top four, I should say, specifically have pulled away. Tyler Isley, Josh Susi, William Farmer, and Justin Cope. Remember the top two, the KDS teammates, Farmer and Cope working together, and we got a challenge for the race lead. Isley just lets Susie go by. Gap is opened up. Josh Susie to the point. Oh, he didn't clear him, though, that much. That's interesting there. Susie, though, gets the lead at the start-finish line. I think Isley should just hold 
third and fourth position back. Oh, this may not be good for Isley here. Susie comes up. Let's Isley get that draft. Cope with nothing. Pardon me, that's Farmer now with nothing, but he does have a run inside on the 17 for P2. And this should give Farmer that spot. This is this is, when you get side by side at Charlotte with the next gen cars, it can be a lot of fun, especially in the practice sessions. Justin Cope trying to take that third slot away. Cope and Susie, I would expect. Not to work each other, excuse me, Cope and Farmer. But still deadlocked for third. Farmer's got the edge for second, definitely for right now. Cope and Isley. Now Cope's got the edge off of turn four as the top two are working together as we put 19 laps on the board. Again, continuing to be your best battle on the track. Look at the big gap between fourth and fifth. That is three seconds as third and fourth lost a lot of time compared to the top two. Brian Pretzlar, Dylan Clark continuing to go to work in this massive pack. Nice smorgasbord happening from us from about eighth on back. Seven cars under a blanket in this battle for position. Cook's got the top spot, and he's working his way up to Menzies and Broderick, those rivals, side by side just about a lap ago. High side got a huge run on the back straightaway. Dylan Clark and Nick Boyd trying to get something to work. Nick Boyd, Dylan Clark, good, good top five runs the past two weeks at Coda and Dover. So 21 laps are complete here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Your race leader. So we've got a battle for the race lead. Hold that thought. William Farmer inside on Josh Susi. For the top spot, you've got a new leader. William Farmer nearly clears up on Josh Susi. They nearly took each other out, and they nearly touch. Susi nearly got into the quarter panel of William Farmer. That nearly was disaster waiting to strike. Thank you. Cope, Susie. Really side yeah, by side. I don't know what happened. I just shoot straight into the wall there. I tried to give you room. Alan Crowell just sending some messages. Over. Under yellow. Yellow is out, and we got a couple of cars involved. Crowell locking up the brakes. He keeps it straight. Ryan Broderick is one of them that has some damage in the number five. Another one may have been Nick Boyd. Remember, we're, this is a world feed situation. Oh, Nick Boyd's front end is gone. How about Mark Cook in the 88? Front end is damaged. So we'll check Ryan Broderick and see if he was the one that was spun first. That's all on me. Might as well give me the EOL then. Said it's all on him. Give me the EOL on that right into it's Nick Boyd in the number 74. Thank goodness, though, that this is uh, artificial turf and not nice grass. Let's see what real time can show us. Oh, hang on a second. Pace cars on three and four. May have been some blocking, because look at who it was again. Broderick and Menzies. Nope. Watch this, an extreme slow-mo. Broderick simply gets loose off of turn four. Sakosi cut the air off. Broderick trying to save it. Ah, oh, and nothing he could do about it. No contact from Menzies. So that's good to see there. And right in front of the 74 with nowhere to go. And in comes Cook. And I think those were the only three involved. Nope, four. Make it Brian Preslar. That also got a piece of it.
And so no issues there at all. Everyone in the pits. Top 10 stay out. These drivers using their first set of the day and winning the race off pit road. Right, Dylan Clark. So the top 10 st stay out. We'll tell you those who stayed out. You see them there on your screen. So we'll pause here and step aside. Your race leader currently, William Farmer at Charlotte. Stay with us here. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. are back here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway getting set to go green. Your top 10 stayed out. William Farmer, Josh Susie, Justin Cope, Tyler Isley, Mark Sikosi, Daniel Menzies, Nick Smart, Ed Fowler, Aiden Bearline, and Josh Aaron. Everyone else came into pit road using their first set of tires. So we'll see what happens. Remember, drivers have six sets this race. So we get set to go back to green flag racing. Everyone's double file. Watch 11th on back as they have already used a set. I think their plan's going to be to try and short pit here at the stage break. So William Farmer, the race leader, he selects the inside for this restart with Josh Susi in second. Row two, Tyler Isley on the up, or two, Justin Cope and Tyler Isley. Row three, it's Mark Sikosi and Daniel Menzies. Row four, Nick Smart and Ed Fowler. And rounding out the top ten, that is Aiden Bearline and Josh Aaron. Susie ready to bring the field back to green. 28 laps. Same with Farmer correction. 28 laps up on the board. And immediately the field goes down to single file. Isley thinking about moving Coke out of the way for third spot on the track. Even though he can do about it currently. Mark Sikosi all over Tyler Isley. Spoiler for fourth position. Meanwhile, Cope and Sikosi get tight. They're trying to not just get a runoff turn four, but trying to draft off of each other. Sikosi still trying to get something to work out here.
Daniel Menzies up in sixth position, but right now Susie tries the outside in the battle for the lead on Farmer. Does not work. Big train down the back straight away. Susie again with a higher entry. Cuts off the route for Justin Cope. And a nice run for Susie off a turn four. He's there. Does he pull up to the inside? Yes, he does for the lead. Susie gets him. And now this affects Farmer big time. He loses out on second. Justin Cope had a huge run. Now let's see what Tyler Isley does off of turn two. Farmer falls back to third. Does he try the crossover? No, he does not. Stays right nip tuck behind the 59. Now Sakosi all the way up top. This opens the door for Daniel Menzies. Dylan Clark and Nick Smart. Look at that. There's a bunch of them up there. And Fowler scrapes the wall off turn four. Falls back a couple of spots. No harm, no foul. With the top four being nose to tail, could be a chance for them to pull away. And Sakosi and Menzies could lose time. Oh, nearly three wide and three. Was that Nick Smart that tried to throw the needle? He's up in the wall. Oh, Menzies. Oh, there they go. Oh, a hard rear end shot with Preslar. Second yellow is out, and we've got more contact. I think they may have been the only two. Maybe Broderick. So Nick Smart in his debut. That was a yellow waiting to happen. This all started in turn number three. He first gets the wall. Then, oh, Menzies and Boyd actually got together. That moves Smart up the track. However, though, if we rewind hey, this... I know we said this in the driver's meeting, but well after the first stage. Hey, Scott. Let's show this here. This all comes first off of turn two. Watch our aerial shot. We'll go to the chopper area shot here. That is smart. Threading the needle and taking it three wide. I bet you that didn't make Daniel Menzies happy at all for sure. But then, Smart gets tight off a of turn four, gets the wall, and then Menzies and Boyd get together. Comes down on to Cook, and a hard shot collects Preslar. And let's watch the onboard here from Nick Smart's perspective. So that is what happened, and now we got more pit stops taking place. And this was your, this was some of the top ten, like Mark Sakosi is now making his first stop of the day. I believe Justin Diltz was a part of that as well. Nope, that was Diltz's second stop. So now because of that, we now have six drivers that have yet to pit as we are on lap number 35. Top four have yet to pit. Josh Susi, Justin Cope, William Farmer, and Tyler Isley. Daniel Menzies also has yet to pit in car number 25. And then also Ed Fowler has yet to pit in the 05. So what you guys are saying in chat at the moment, D Fast Racer 13 is also rooting for Aiden Barreline, currently in the 23rd position. He's got some right side damage to his machine. Camden Jester rooting for Tyler Isley in the Facebook chat. Yes, we are on two streams outside of the Twitch. We are on Facebook. Isley currently running in fourth position. This should be about two laps until we get the green flag, so we'll keep it here and listen to race control.
Reset the field here for the restart. Josh Susi and Justin Cope is row one. Tyler Isley, William Farmer, row two. Row three, Dylan Clark and Nick Boyd. Row four is Mark Cook and Tyler Rush. And row five, that is John Crow and Ed Fowler. Susi selecting the outside groove as we get ready to come back to green. The iRacing pace car makes its way into pit road. Susi set. We're back at it. And immediately gets going. However, though, there is a lane. I think if I recall correctly, there is a lane. Hey, I don't deserve that. There may be a lane change rule. I'm not too hey, sure. Can I get cleared? Nick Boyd. Dylan Clark go at it. What you, would you get there, Tyler? For fifth. Three wide. Passing under yellow. William Farmer extremely tight off of four, doesn't get the wall. The same thing on top of maybe four when you're launching the And leader. we're back to yellow. Oh, this was right in, was this in front of the leaders? Nick Smart, Terry Marinaro. And that may end it for Nick Smart tonight. Marinaro, one of the biggest movers in the race so far. Nick Smart also involved. Let's see what brought the yellow flag out. That is from Smart's on board. Oh my goodness, that was weird. We're going to have to rewind this a couple of notches and see what brought this all out. Pass guard. Pace guard in the three. So first off, oh man, did the 33 of Marinaro just get tight off of four with the 23 of, let's watch this in real time. Let's see here. So they're racing each other pretty good. Marinaro gets tied up on Dilts. And oh man, Smart was just trying to avoid him. There was just no room for him or else he was going in the grass. It's a tough break for Nick Smart indeed. As those three drivers come on into pit row, this is that this is gonna be a big test of endurance tonight. This is our third yellow flag of the race. Hey, what are you doing, bud?
Yeah, okay. Should be two to green this time by. Taking us up. Thank you. Set to get back to green here. We've got just about 12 laps to go. We come back to green in stage number one. Hopefully this is not going to turn into a wreck fest tonight. This is a long race, 234 laps. So a long run should be expected tonight, that's for sure. Susie selects the outside line for the restart with his teammate Tyler Isley next to him. Row two is Justin Cope and Nick Boyd. Row three, Dylan Clark and William Farmer. Row four is Tyler Rush and Mark Cook. And row five, Ed Fowler and Jimmy Barr. Ones that have not pit yet, Josh Susie, Tyler Isley, Justin Cope, William Farmer, and Ed Fowler. Only two drivers that have yet to come in. Susie gets the right to fire first. Likely he's going to be bringing in. Oh, big stack up in the record already. Justin Cope is around. No caution. Check out the pace car. Check out the pace car. Check it out the pace car. And they're going to redo this restart. I would assume. Check it out the pace car. Let's watch what happened. Pace car's not getting on. Here he comes. I think we're going to go around. Well, Isley did not fire. Uh, that's how I made a way for him. Oh, never mind. But thank goodness, though, this was just a uh, one car spin. Is there a concession stand over here? We can probably get something to drink. It definitely not was what Cope wanted. He did not expect. It was just a misfire on Isley's part. But let's see here. Got up in his second gear and was just all set. We'll see who plowed into him. It's at 34 for Clark. Oh, no. Actually, thinking about it, because Clark never got into him. Watch this. He went to the right. I don't know if it was because of the fact that he was shifting from first to second because you don't really see a lot of drivers 
go into first gear. I mean, a guy like Nick Boyd, he's in second gear. He was just caught sleeping. So Josh Aaron is in the pits. And we wait. To go, but couldn't really go. Yeah. Fun chatter here as we're nearing the end of stage one. Up. Oh. Don't know if we we're doing our best to get you back on the lead lap slope. Yeah, he's got mic problems. Yeah. All kinds of problems. He says thank you. Take the top. Susie selects the top for the restart. So let's go back to green. We'll have under 10 laps to go in the opening stage. Let's reset the field here. Susie selects the top. Tyler Isley is second. Row two. That is Nick Boyd. Remember, he's got. A, he's already used a quick repair. And William Farmer. Row two. That is Tyler Rush and Mark Cook. Row four is Dylan Clark and Ed Fowler. And row five is John Crow and Jimmy Barr. Remember, Isley, Susie, Farmer, and Fowler have yet to pit along with Daniel Menzies and Justin Cope. One driver out of the race so far, that is Terry Marinaro. So set to go, back to green. We have 47 laps in the books this time by. The sun is definitely set. That should not be a factor the rest of this race. Now that means the track temp will go down. Speeds will go up. We are back to green. When staying single file, it's really scattered all around. 
Just drivers trying to find that low groove as soon as possible. Farmer peaked down to the inside, couldn't find anything. This gives a chance for Nick Boyd, who's got some left side damage to take it away. Farmer wicked tight in three and four. That's gonna cost him two, maybe even three. Farmer falls back to fifth. Now here goes Dylan Clark down to the inside. Mark Cook, John Crow are part of this battle as well. And Nick Boyd is back to third. He wants second. Can he get the help? No, he does not. Hello, Tyler Rush down to the inside. Ryan Broderick on the apron. And Fowler, that's for the final stage point in 10th. Broderick takes that away. Tyler Rush still trying that inside for third position. The top two remain single file. Trying to get a gap on Nick Boyd. They cannot. Boyd still finds some ground. Now Boyd thinking the outside off of turn number two. What a pass. He's got it nicely. Now Susie tries to draft off the 17 to get him some room. He cannot get it. Let's see if that 74 tries the outside. Oh, man, he had off the gas, and here comes Rush. All the way on the exit. Boyd literally shoving Susie. Nearly got the rear wheels off the ground. He nearly turned them. Five to go in stage one. This is getting intense. High side again, the momentum off of turn two. Boyd bumping Josh Susie. Tyler Rush tries again. Oh, look out, John Crow. Nearly gets the wall. Susie's loose. Here comes Tyler Rush to take the lead. Four to go in stage one. Susie is second. Where did Isley fall all the way back to? Seventh position. He's side by side with Mark Cook for that spot. Mark Sikosley currently in 10th. First guy out is Jimmy Barr in the 81. And he's already working his way up to this huge pack of wad. This is getting crazy. Three laps to go with the opening stage. Tyler Rush has a gap open because side by side for a second is taking place. Four tenths of a second, make it a half second now. They're losing so much time, so much air. Oh, look at this, Dylan Clark three wide. Susie's not gonna like that at all. Broderick nearly scraped the wall. That puts Boyd up to second. Clark's in third, Susie. Nearly gets turned around off of Broderick. Brian Pressler now in 10th. Isley the first one out in 11th. They may have found it down to double, to, from double wide to a train. Pressler trying to get by on Broderick for ninth position. Three wide entering turn three behind them. Look at the runs here from Bearline. Making some room, making some ground up. Meanwhile, Tyler Rush, one to go in stage one, has the lead. Dylan Clark closing in. He may find a way to get a slingshot down the back. He's got a run. He may get a run. Oh, Clark didn't look to the inside. This time it's Crow looking to the inside. For the stage one win, green and white checkers are out and it's going to Tyler Rush in the number 27. And for 10th, Josh Susie falls back wow. to 10th. What, the end of stage one. what an ending to the stage. Now to have a sooner for this farmer, we just uh, kept having the yellows. <laughs> so Tyler yeah, Rush. Man, I, I needed that stage. So yeah, Rush takes the stage. Sure. Maybe I would have rather get it over with. As we are under. We were racing, guys. That was, uh, was intense. Our stage break. Pit stops. Car, middle back, middle back. Pit stops about to take place. Remember, some drivers have already used a set of the six they have tonight.
So I would assume everyone would come down to pit row this time by. I think someone late just joined in. If I got that right, because I just saw a 25 mil pop up. That's Kyle Milliken. Uh, thanks, Ronaldo. Milliken is joining the race. That is interesting. So we will watch the 27 stop here. Nice turtle wax machine. See all the driver's pit stops on the bottom of your screen, specifically the top three coming into the pits. Only one driver stayed out. That's Tom Parra deletes some laps. And the race off pit road goes to Rush, followed by Sakosi, Clark, Cook, Bearline fifth. That's a big stop for him. Slow stop for Crow. Susie gets out seventh. Preslar eighth. Smeraldo ninth. Isley tenth. Slow stops coming from Nick Boyd, who if I would assume was repairing optional damage, and a slow stop as well for John Crow. Tom Para in the 16 stays out. We'll get you the faster and fastest stops when we come back in just a moment. Back here, Tom Para in to lead some laps. Congrats, Para. <laughs> so we get set to go back to green to begin stage number right. two. You made for stage two. Just remember, we still have a long, long way to go. So just keep that in mind. Um, try to keep it, keep it clean and orderly. Except for you, sixty-seven. So we're set to go back to green. Let's reset the field here. Tyler Rush, Mark Sikosi, that's the front row. I hear you. Row number two is Dylan Clark and Mark Cook. Row three. Next stage breaks. What now? Aiden Bearline and Mark and John Crow. Row four, Josh Susi, Brian Preslar. And rounding out the top ten. We can make sure we've got this right is Paul Sparado and Tyler Isley. I don't have a harness. I need a backpack. So as we get set to go back to green, Tyler Rush is the right to fire first. So what we're going to do here is we 
go back to green. We're gonna do, turn that volume up. Yeah. And if you've got a butt kicker, make sure you turn it on because it's time to crank it up. What's wrong, Tara? I went down the road and it's closed now. No problem. I don't know why. You didn't fit the first few times. Bye. Yeah, you were sitting later as they were closing the road. I don't want to go. Look out, Paul Smirano. That got close for the 57, got really tight off of turn number four, and the race is on. Tyler Rush leads. Mark Sikosi second. Some drivers fanning out to the bottom. Look at Josh Susi. Nearly got on that quarter panel of Mark Cook for P5 on the track. He saves it in front of them. Here comes Aiden Bearline on Dylan Clark for third. Bearline from 24th to 4th, currently your biggest mover of the race. Bearline doesn't have the help off turn two to get a draft on by. Meanwhile, it's Mark Cook inside on Dylan Clark. Easy pass for third position. This is an interesting scenario here. Tyler Rush went off turn two, exit on the high side, and went down to the low line to try and break the draft on Mark Sikosi. Here was the issue though. Sikosi had help from Mark Cook, and now Sikosi on the outside. No help from Mark Cook until he comes off turn two for the lead. And Rush just got a tiny bit loose on the exit of turn two, and he propels the eight to the front. But now let's see what happens as they're side by side. Can Rush get the edge or can Sikosi get the edge? Off of four, Sikosi can lead the lap of the line. Just by a door and behind them, Mark Cook, Josh Susi in a war for third. Great view here in the battle for the lead. Top four under a blanket. This could open a spot up for Dylan Clark to join in on the battle for the lead. Sikosi continuing to edge out Tyler Rush. Here comes Tyler Isley back into the thick of things. Up into the fifth position in car number 17. He's going to work with his teammate, that's for sure, and Josh Susie. They're not going to create a third lane as of right now. Want to keep it safe. This is only a two-group track at Charlotte for sure. Sometimes the third group can be a risk. Nearly rush, nearly clear. Sikosi, and they nearly get together. That nearly turned into a big one waiting to happen. Susie nearly three wide, oh, trouble behind them. And that, speaking of the big one, there it is. Fowler is involved. That is Justin Diltz in the 23. Jimmy Barr also involved. Same with Daniel M Menzies. Bravo. Our race is over. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that car was in the wall. Yeah, like I, I saw the wreck in 15th place and 10 other people piled. Ryan Broderick not happy. Our sixth yellow of the race, the first and You know, it's funny to me, that happens every single week. <laughs> and it does. That's a fact. Hey, car into three. He ain't lying. The first driver we saw involved in Can an we go? accident was this man here. Hey, Alan, three, I was trying to get through. Alan Crowell in the 54. This happened in front of him. Slows. Oh, Broderick. Okay, Mark, is there a minimum number Slowed of places up. or a minimum point position required to get into the playoff? Slowed up. And let's see what brought this yellow flag out. Watch Broderick here in the number five. Let's go back over and try and find Ryan. There he is. 
There's Jimmy Barr. They slowed up for something in front. Oh, man. There was contact in front with the sparks flying. Oh, my heavens. That's William Farmer. Look at that front end. The car's destroyed. So here is... We can get a better picture of it for you right now. It's Enters Pit Lane. Oh, my. Justin Diltz. That's a powerful lick. A rear edge shot. Much like what happened with Steve Grissom at Atlanta back when they had the full oval. Let's rewind and see what first happened with Justin Diltz and what was definitely a terrifying wreck. Battling with Preslar. Oh, that's a clear net code. One of the worst I've seen in a while. Let's ride again with Alan Crowell here on this onboard. Oh my goodness. Broderick was on the brakes and a hard crash for Alan. This is Stilts. Oh my goodness, he just gets clobbered. Let's go to Menzies. Nowhere to go. I was the one who got in that 23 and then he got turned underneath. And finally, Jimmy Barr. Trying to miss it. The track is just pretty much, oh man. Hit the 95 and then the 25. So Barr was the one that got Menzies. Trash heap, that's for sure. But I got, I got an EOL, man. So you're supposed to go by me, dude. You're never in the wrong, Alan. Just remember. Many quick repairs are being used here. And it's just the beginning of stage number two, folks. Should be going back to green next time by. Haven't heard anything from Sakosi, the leader. Let's see if the lights go off. And they do. So Mark selected the bottom. Upstairs, buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, reset the field here. Sakosi selects the bottom. Tyler Rush Check next to way. him. Downtown. That's row one. Mark Cook, Josh Susie, row two. Row number three, Tyler Isley. And John Crow. Dylan Clark, Aiden Bearline. And row number four, and round at the top ten, is Brian Preslar and Paul Smirado. Caution lamps put me to sleep. It's the ultimate test of endurance, the World 350 yeah, here at Charlotte tonight. Pace car is in. Sikosi gets the right to fire first. We are back to green. Good restart from Sikosi. He can clear up on Tyler Rush if he wants. Meanwhile, nearly three wide behind them. Mark Cook, Josh Susi for third. And Susi and Isley not working together here. Now Isley not clearing up to work oh, with yeah, Susi. 
He does so now, but Susie is trapped up top with Dylan Clark next to him for P5. Susie should have the power off of turn number four, and we're on for second. Cook and Rush. Nicely working with that number 27 underneath. Cook's got no help unless he gets it off of turn two. Icely and Susie. Susie goes up top. Instead of trying to help out, Mark Cook gets some sort of pull. And shuts the door on the 34. But Rush has a run off of turn four, possibly on. Oh, nearly cleared on the 88. Could have caused destruction there. Icy and Susie right behind in positions number four and five. Rush the advantage on the turns on the straight. Still Mark Cook. Cook's got that pull off of Sakosi And gets right off to the rear bumper. Can't come down just yet. Incredible racing for the lead here. Stage two for those wondering at home. Ending at lap number 110. Oh man, this is exciting. Surprise that Sakosi hasn't been able to pull away with this battling going on for P2. But now Tyler Rush up to Mark Sakosi. Two by two by two for the top spot. And now the advantage should go to car 27. And he's got it. Tyler rushed to the lead. Tyler Isley second. The Tyler and Tyler show off of turn two. Now they may start getting down to a single file line here. John Crow washes up a lane. Here comes Susie, three wide. They nearly get together and Susie has to let off the gas. Yeah. Now there they go. <laughs> Susie Sakosi, oh my holy moly, Sakosi, barrel rolling, big time like a top. Major yellow. Well, great control. Why are you pushing it three wide like that? You know, that, that's just bull. That's bull. He almost spun Mark Cook on purpose too. Every time you get behind me, you wreck me. John Crow hey, hey, is angry, and I don't blame don't him. Care about any type of racing class, and we just drive through people. Yeah, this is the speed. Easy killer, you shouldn't talk. Dirty, dirty ass driver. We got a lot of racing angry folks, heads. Can you please clear my uh, my black from going 100 miles an hour through the pits? Want to come in here and act like you own this league, dude? You need to get him. Get your ass in line. Oh, man. They're really talking trash. You already made too many enemies in here to be doing crap like that. I don't care about enemies. This is racing. He got spun. I'm coming 74. I got some damage. Too many drivers. It's freaking ridiculous. Damn. Yep, I know. Who are you guys even talking to? I'm wondering to that, too. Stupid ass Ryan Broderick, who else? He's been wrecking everybody through the whole damn race. That's a three wide move and Crow right into Sakosi into Oh my goodness. And watch the number eight here. How does he catch all this air into the outside wall? And look at oh my goodness. Holy moly. Up on all fours. Hey, Mizzy, just let us know next time, man. Sorry, I didn't know you were coming. Let's watch this in real time. We've got a lot of onboards to yeah, watch. Yeah, I know, my bad. I, I didn't see this one, my bad. It's all good. Everybody else is too busy around their mouth, so just don't worry about it. Oh, man, next Susie time. took a big shot there as well. 10-4, you got it, buddy. Let's watch from the extreme slow-mo. Three wide is just extremely risky and usually leads to bad things. Go ahead, Mark. You get ahead of me, buddy. Look at that. There's Cook. Man, Nick Boyd, oh, he almost had it missed. Milliken in the 42 is back in it. 
Yeah, so I couldn't hear you over Discord. I don't know if you're talking to me, Crow, or not, but that's a fucking line. That's all we do. I can't let this. Trying to keep it straight. Someone comes down. Oh, ouch! Hits the end of the safer. Oh, you're good. It looked like you just held the bottom or the middle because you thought we were still going to be wide. You got door slam. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what I saw. And he just kept his foot in it like he was going through the fire and the flames. Chris, I need you to look at my penalty. Cause I got a pass under yellow penalty for somebody that ran into me under yellow. This is Growl. Almost had lane in there and plowed right into Cope. Also, give me an EOL because I just want to be at the back. I'm not tearing off any car. I just want to finish this race. Dreslar has it almost missed. Oh my goodness, Broderick! What the hell is he doing? Let's go to Mark Cook in the 88. A lot of angry drivers tonight, that's for sure. And now we go to Mark Sikosi, who's about to take the wildest ride in this series history. Well, if it was someone that had to take the wild ride, it'd be the host. Warning for those that get motion sickness. That is what it's like to be in a race car. Let's go to Ryan Broderick here. We are not back to green yet for those wondering. That isn't the aftermath of things, but... Chris, can you give me an EOL? I want to oh, back. Justin Culp, that's late after on. You should have just pit again. And we got we to gotta rewind, though, and watch the number five. I did, but keep cycling me to the front. Watch this. He's not even letting off the gas. That, oh, my goodness! How did he get the lane? Was he even involved? We're going from the chase view. I want to see this. Wow, Broderick may need a change of pants. I get the, a lot of drivers are frustrated with him. But my goodness, he needs a change of pants, that is for sure. I'd like to make a correction, by the way. The stage is actually not just, there are actually four stages, ending at 110, 165, and 234. As we are set for the restart, a lot of drivers have been taken out after what just went down. Isley and Rush, row one. Bearline and Boyd in row two. Row three, Nick Smart, Paul Smeraldo, row four. Josh Susie and Dylan Clark in row five. Josh Aaron, Ryan Broderick. Our drivers, many drivers only have one quick repair left due to that. Rush fires and we're back to green. Clean away from Tyler Isley. Aiden Bearline, one of the lucky ones who missed the wreck up to third position. Still many drivers are in the pits and have already had to use their quick repair for those wondering at home. Those drivers, Ryan Preslar, Tom Perra, Alan Crowell, and Jimmy Barr. Here's Nick Smart for third. Remember, he's already used his quick repairs. He's been in two wrecks today, and he is in third. Josh Susi, Nick Boyd were involved in the wreck working together. nicely. One staying single file for right now. Here comes Sikosi while he is a lap down. He's the first driver a lap down as soon as he makes an easy pass on Nick Smart. Broderick in the pits. I'm assuming this is a penalty for something. I don't know for what it is. We'll see. Rush continues to lead. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a battle for second. Isley and Susie, the teammates. Working together. Justin Dilch just said something. We missed control of that. And they're working together to get up to Tyler Rush. Behind them, it's still Barreline and Clark in a good battle for fifth position. A lot of drivers that started in the rear worked out for them. They've made their way up to the front. Ten cars are on the lead lap. Isley and Susie still going at it for second spot. Technical difficulties at the moment with our timing as Isley and Susie have worked their way up. So Tyler Rush continues to lead. We've got a three car battle for the race lead. We step away. You're not going to miss a thing though. We take you side by side. are back here the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the World 350. Tyler Rush currently leads on Tyler Isley and Josh Susie, Dylan Clark, and Nick Smart. That's your top five. If you have joined us and you were wondering why there are so many cars currently out of this race, well, let's explain why. A big one took place in the last caution that took out at least 10 to 15 cars, many of which had already used their quick repairer. Top five currently knows the tail. Tyler Rush, Tyler Isley, Josh Susi, Dylan Clark, and Nick Smart. That is again your best battle on the track at the moment. Susi and Isley, the teammates at the KTS Motorsports Camp, trying to work together. You've got Mark Sakosi. Now remember, Sakosi is the first car a lap down and wants to get back on the lead lap. So technically, this is a four-car battle as Sakosi tries to do a pass in the grass. Dylan Clark is currently in the fourth position. Looks one way your fifth place, fifth place driver is Nick, Nick Smart. He is currently fifth spot, 2.7 seconds back on the fourth place driver. Three wide down the back straightaway. Isley lets off. He's not happy at Sikosi, who washes up the track, nearly takes Susie out. Oh my. 
Sakosi trying to, I don't, I'm not going to say sabotage. That'd be the rude thing to say. As Isley and Clark go at it, and that's just a battle in third position. If Clark can get a nice slipstream off of Sakosi, he could take third, but I'd see the advantage going to the 17. And a good pass. So Clark takes third, Isley is fourth, but a battle for the lead is on. Josh Susi just a car length back on Tyler Rush. On board with the number 12. Up to the spoiler. Riding it in fifth gear and he's got to run underneath. This could be an easy pass for the race lead. He's got the run. Let's see if he can lead it at the start finish line. Oh, that's an easy pass right there. Susie to the lead and clears Tyler Rush. Stage two ending at lap 110. Now Clark all over Tyler Rush. Continuing to duke at it. Tyler Isley back there running in P4. Sakosi again, remember, first car lap down. When the yellow comes out, he gets the free pass. Josh Aaron on the radio. Could not capture that. Aaron currently running in ninth position. How would I my end, so? I believe he was saying that the 74 may be blinking. Let's go back over here. Good battle happening. That is for fifth position. Nick Smart on Daniel Menzies. So after one and a quarter hours, we welcome you to the lap 100 mark of the World 350. And we should have been at lap 100 mo many moments ago. Right now, Nick Boyd and Josh Aaron go at it for eighth position. Paul Smirato back there in 10th. He, right now, guaranteed, as long as he doesn't spin or a yellow doesn't come out uh, before the end of lap 110, uh, he will be the free, he will be receiving the final stage point. He's got his teammate behind him, which is the seven of Brick Swole. You see there on the bottom of your screen, a lot of drivers that are la at least a lap down from that big wreck as many had to tow their car back to the pits because they would not start up at all. Let's go back over to that battle for position. This time it's Nick Smart and Daniel Menzies for fifth. All over that spoiler of the 25. By the way, for those wondering at home, we've got a battle for the lead. Josh Susi and Dylan Clark. Remember, Clark finished in second in stage one, and he does not want to be in second. Seven laps to go at the line in stage number two. One and a half car lengths separate them. See Clark getting the draft. 
compare their lap times while we were at it. Let me, let's, uh, here, let's compare the lap times now. There we go. See the last four laps, Clark has gotten the advantage and here we go for the race lead. I think that 34's got to run inside, he does. Let's take a look and see if there's any drivers that are ahead that could lap. And there are two drivers. This time Clark is slower by a couple hundreds. One of those drivers is the five of Ryan Broderick and another driver, I am unsure. I think that's Jimmy Barr in the 81. Four to go in this stage. Battle for 10 bonus points and a playoff point. Clark faster, 200s this time. Clark with a run to the inside. Battle for the lead. This time nobody has any help. They are neutralized entering turn number three. Clark, can he get the lead of the line? The answer, can he clear? Is not yet. Susie gets the run. Three to go in stage two. The top two, by the way, last pitted on lap number 78. It was just 23 laps after the end, so these drivers will be on their fourth set. At the yellow. Third or fourth, I think Clark is on his fourth and he, he would be Susie would be on his third so Dylan Clark leads two to go in stage two the pits are closed Tyler Rush won stage one with this man in second can he get it Clark dealing with some lap traffic ahead one of the DraftKings team and that's Jimmy Barr in the 81 and Ryan Broderick they let things go by Could be whoever gets the draft, and if they use one as a pick, that could be big. Final lap in stage two, underway. We get a draft off Broderick. Susie shuts the door. Broderick gonna play some mind games here. Who goes where? This is gonna get interesting. Susie closes in. Broderick closes up. Stage win goes to Clark. And they are not going to like how Broderick Good raced. At the end of stage two. Broderick clearly in 13th position, three laps down. I get he was trying to avoid going a fourth lap down, but who cares at this point is my question. Turn one, guys. So Dylan Clark wins stage number two. This is our eighth caution of the day. Mark Sakosi will receive the free pass. So away here as pit road opens up. Close it up. Pit road is open and everyone's coming in.
So we'll look here and see how they do. We'll see who wins the race off pit road. Longer stop for Dylan Clark. Let's see here. Susie wins the race off pit road. Dylan Clark, 27.87. I assume he's repairing optional. optional. And Tyler Isley comes out second. Menzies third. Bearline fourth and Josh Aaron fifth. We'll step aside, go to break once again. Stay with us here, stage three coming up next in the World 350. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Ready to go back to green here at Charlotte. Josh Susi, the race leader. Next race, by the way, for us. We're going back to road racing. You thought we were done? No, we are not. Our next race is at Sonoma for the Sonoma Valley 282 laps. Don't miss that right here on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala and the National Sim Racing League Facebook page. Mark Sikosi got the free pass. He is back on the lead lap. We'll try to reset the field here for you as we, we begin stage number three. So Josh Susi selects the top. Tyler Isley next to him. That's row one, row two, eight and it's Daniel Menzies and Aiden Bearline, row three. Josh Aaron and Tyler Rush. Row four, Nick Boyd and Dylan Clark. And row five is Mark Sikosi, last car on the lead lap. Stage three, for those wondering at home, will end on lap 165. Susie, the right to fire first. He's your control car, and he goes. Good restart can clear it down on Isley. Bear line, highest spot he's been in today in third position. Menzies inside on Tyler Rush, looking for P4. Take a look and see what you guys are seeing in chat while we are at it. That's Bear line all over on Tyler Rush for second. 
Novas, Novas TV sa says, they're all dead, BRB need to get the popcorn. Racist to Girl 13 says, wow. Steel City Demon says, yay. And as for Kujo's live, that's just spam. Go ahead, John, I can say. Dylan Clark says to John Crow, go ahead. Interesting that he says that, especially after he won stage number two. Top four, nose to tail at the moment. Top five, excuse me, nose to tail at the moment. Barreline nearly shoved Tyler Isley around. That got oh so close to being a big one and pretty much giving Josh Susi the win. Menzies pulled out of line, trying to see if Rush would go with him. The answer is no, but we're under yellow. And that is Paul Smeraldo in turn number two. He's running in the 12th position. I think he was running 10th at the time. Could have been the first car back on the lead lap. And that car is destroyed, and I think that's going to do it for him tonight. Look at the replay and see what happened to the driver of the hey, number 57. And this may have been a thing with this was him by himself. Yep, wow. Oversteer in the car. Overcorrects it. Oh, he pounds the wall right in front of Sakosi. And pounds it twice there. That is, I have not seen a car of Oversteer in Charlotte like that before. On iRacing. Car just snapped out. Two big licks for Paul. Quickie yellow being ruled. Car must have just been damaged enough for that to happen, I would assume. Select number of drivers are in the pits. Tyler Isley, Dylan Clark are the notables. So this is Isley's fourth stop, would be his fourth set of tires, I would assume. Dylan Clark did fuel only. Remember, he's got to be careful. I think he's only got like one or two sets remaining. We can't look at the pit stop history. Actually, you know what? We can. Let's take a look at it for Dylan Clark because we can know when there's a four tire stop, when there's a two tire, when there's a fuel only stop. So Dylan Clark, four stops on the day. We just saw him do a fuel only stop. We can't tell How long it was between that second and third stop. I would assume with the four point something, those have been both fuel only stops. So I think he's got four sets left. Outside of Esmeralda. And again, that's just my guess. We can look at the pit lane time and see if that helps us. I don't I doubt that it will. But this kinda does nope it does not really. So that being said, two to green. Yeah, let us know where you're watching from and who you're rooting for tonight. Up. 
Thank you. Yeah, you're on the bottom, 13. All right, let's reset the field here. So Susie selects the top. Aiden Bearline is in second. Again, his, his highest so far today. Row two, Tyler Rush and Daniel Menzies. Row number three, Josh Aaron and Nick Boyd. Row four, Tyler Isley, Dylan Clark. Row five, Mark Sikosi and your free pass car, Justin Delt. Chris Lynn picks Kayla McCarthy to win. You such a troll. <laughs> just messing. He's just messing with us. He's having some fun. It's getting, you're getting bored down there, aren't you? Because we haven't seen a, a lot of cautions in this stage, huh? Huh? <laughs> All right, here we go. After the ninth yellow of the day, Susie is the control car. Barreline is caught sleeping big time. I think he was maybe firing out of second gear or something. I don't know, but he lost a spot to Tyler Rush. Nick Boyd and Daniel Menzies go at it for P4. Tyler Riceley running in six. Nick Boyd a bump to Daniel Menzies down the back chute. And Boyd should have the advantage on Isley, but remember Isley just pitted for a set of tires. I mean, if you're Isley, why not? You're staying up in the front of the field. Like, drivers will have like an extra set or so after we get through the, the entire pit window. Nick Boyd tight off a of two. Here comes Josh Aaron, sixth spot. It's his. Each trying to side draft off of each other. Aaron just clips the apron with the splitter off the corner. 10 cars on the lead lap. Many drivers, though, have called it a day, pretty much. Aaron takes away the spot. Let's go back to the front of the field. Menzies by Isley. A lot of blocking going on in the corner. It's getting really good. Bearline running P3, but Daniel Menzies all over him. Just right up to the spoiler again. Always tough to pass here around Charlotte Motor Speedway. We've seen it in the past few races of the season so far. You need help if you want to get a spot. Unless your opponent doesn't have help. That way, there is a truce. Rush tried to get some help there from Bearline. But Susie shut the door. Bearline tries to get a run off the corner. And he's going to lose a spot likely. Menzies wants third. He's got it for right now. Clears him. Nice pass by Menzies on the outside. We've done it earlier on today. Menzi shuts the door on Tyler Isley for that third position as Nick Boyd fell back to fifth. Aiden Bearline all the way back to sixth. Josh Aaron, Dylan Clark in this battle, and same with Mark Sikosi. From flipping to up in ninth on the lead lap and possibly battling for the lead. Oh man, that's getting tight ahead. Isley's in the wall, and he's mad. Here 
Here's Nick Boyd wanting third. Top two pull away by just about four tenths. Tyler, I am so sorry, bro. I was trying to get out of that situation, man. I am terribly sorry about that, dude. Off my nose three quarters in a row. Bearline tried to make a pass up on the outside, but Kanadi tucks right behind the 74. Isley claiming that Menzies cut, ch ch chopped his front end off three corners in a row. And we'll see if he races Menzies harder. That may be the highest position I've seen Menzies in a while in NSRO competition. Up to P3. Nick Boyd is fourth, Dylan Clark fifth, and Isley's going at it like a madman. For six on bear line, can't clear yet, still at the door. And they're still deadlocked, coming to the line, bear line still with the advantage by a door. John Crow not on the lead lap with the pack, currently in 13th position. Up front though, Nick Boyd stuck on the outside, trying to make a pass. He's got a nice pull coming off of that 27 of rush. And Menzies may lose some ground on the straight. So he falls back into fourth position. Nick Boyd tries to get a run up on the outside. Let's see if he gets a run on 27. Tyler Rush, he's at the door. And I think he could get the help here. Oh man, that's pretty interesting. Dylan Clark waited until late to get up to that outside. Try and pass Menzies, but Tyler Rush still with the, with the run. On the turns, Nick Boyd. Oh, that's a tough break. Had an easy chance at second spot, but Menzies and Clark decided not to go with them. I think they know that 74 is underrated tonight. He is definitely fast. Oh, Tyler Isley goes around with bear line. There's the yellow. I think the car just snapped underneath from Isley. First wreck for him today, I believe. And we'll have to use his first quick repair. Come on, let's stay in it. Free pass goes to Broderick in the five. Do uh, you Can you ELL the 17 so I don't get a pass under yellow penalty for the second time? How about you shut the hell up and, and let me tell him the same exact thing? <laughs> My bad, 74. I didn't mean to check up on you like that. Isley oh, is so in. Good. And we will see what happened here. It's going to sound really tricky, so my foot slipped off the uh, gas. Isley clipped the apron, and that's what sent him loose. And when he overcorrects, right into the path of bear line. That's a shame. There's John Crow as well. Isley was having a, Bearline was having a heck of a run, as was Isley. <laughs> right there, man. Bearline with nowhere to go. We're going to watch his onboard. Dog on the outside. Let's watch him standing on board here with that roll ball, that stabilized on board. There was nothing. Bear line. There was nothing he could do. Said nowhere to go at all. Dilts and Aaron pitted. And your race leader with 100 laps to go is Josh Susi. We will take a break and pause here. And we'll, we'll actually we'll stay, stay here with you real quick and see if the leader does come into the pits. I would not expect him to. As after we hit stage three, I think we have a one-stop race to the finish. 
Race of Girl says, darn bummer. Chris, he could breathe for a second until that situation happened with Isley. So leader stays out and we will go to break. Stay with us. Welcome you back to live coverage of the World 350. Apologize if you heard some extra stuff during the commercials. We had a hot mic on, so nothing offensive though, but some stuff that I'll just say that could get copyrighted and we would not want to get uh, something bad for that. Set to go back to green. Oh, oh, wait a second. What is this? Oh my goodness, what is this? Put on the Steve, put on the Stone Cold Steve Austin theme music. Kayla McCarthy is after the building. Just when we get her out the track, okay? All righty. Josh Susie, the top side with Tyler Rush in second. Then it is Nick Boyd, Dylan Clark, Daniel Menzies. Mark Sakosi, Aiden Bearline, Justin Diltz, Josh Aaron, and Tyler Isley. Boy. Hey, Grandma. Stage, by the way, ends at lap 165. Top two get a nice gap on each other. Nick Boyd third, Daniel Menzies fourth. Here comes Aiden Bearline. Off the quick repair. And Menzies, easy pass. Takes away P3. Nick Boyd is up to fourth, but Bearline all over that spoiler. He wants P4. Just used his quick repair for the first time tonight. Appreciate it. So bear line up to the fourth position. Boyd back in fifth. Dylan Clark sixth. Mark Sakosi now is running in the seventh spot. Tyler Isley, for those wondering where he is after his quick repair from his first spin, he is back in the ninth position. But it continues to be Josh Susi, Tyler Rush, Daniel Menzies, Aiden Bearline, your top four nose to tail. Should merge up though into possibly a nine car train. Could be maybe even a 10 car train momentarily. So Ryan Broderick for those wondering, back on the lead lap in 10th position. Next yellow we would see Paul Smirado 
back on to Lee Lapp. Tyler Rush trying to find something. Aiden Barreline up on the outside of Daniel Menzies. And he's going to try and get this draft off of two. He's got it off of Rush. Thank you. Nice pass for Barreline. Had that figured out. Now here's Nick Boyd. Wanting, for the Queen of Texas. wanting fourth. So here's Josh Aaron. Currently in ninth, Kayla McCarthy who may not be finishing in 26th spot today. So a nice couple of late entries. Your pick is alive for sure, Chris. Look at Barreline off of turn two. He's got, oh, Rush is getting the draft. Not Barreline on the back straightaway. Remember, Rush and Susie are teammates as well out of the KTS camp. Is he gonna get it again? Yes, he will. Making it a tough challenge for Aiden Barreline for P2. Sorry, Joe, I'm trying to get some more. Bearline's going to have to get a push from Menzies if he wants second spot. Let's see if he gets it here. Menzies going with Rush this time. It is like Aiden Bearline versus everyone. See what happens at the line. Can Bearline edge out Rush? My goodness, imagine if we were to get a yellow and these two were side by side. It would be pretty close in my opinion. Barreline still not getting it. If Nick Boyd was up there, I think he could get some help. And that is a big, I think. The only teammates Nick Boyd technically has out of the general chat, Para, Milliken, Diltz, Menzies, and Crowan. I'm surprised that Menzies is not working. How about Tyler Isley? After the rock, up to P4. And working with his team. Oh my goodness, Icy's a side. You know what, boys? I'm taking a three wide. And he hits the brakes. Pulls out of it. Fifth through seven. Gets stacked up with Menzies back in fifth. No one wants to work with Aiden Bearline. KTS wants to go one, two, three. 20 to go until the end of stage number three. That's a tough break for Aiden Bearline. No one wanted to help him out, not even Daniel Menzies. And he falls back. Bearline, he's got heart though, that's for sure. Still not giving up. Brick Swolf reports. He went off track in the number seven. Just about 20 seconds ago. He's lagging. Lagging pretty well. Isley loose off of turn four. And Bearline almost got a draft off of Tyler Rush. This is Isley's on board. Let's see what happens off of turn two. Oh, this is a huge run on Tyler. This time, Bearline gets a bump draft to Tyler. Could help him out just a little bit. Oh, Susie comes down. Here comes the 13. Cuts him off. Here's a bump draft to Susie. And that puts Aiden up into second spot. Continues to shove him. Nearly put the right rear, rear wheel off the ground. Now what do you do here if you're Aiden? Oh, immediately ducks down low and he's not gonna get any help at all. Not even a chance. The 27 and the 17 are all gonna go up on the outside and to push Susie back out to the front. Again, it is KTS versus everyone else. Hi, Look at this. Kayla McCarthy again. Hi, Kayla. Kayla 316 Hi. has entered yeah, the three, building. Won the pole, won the pre final, and won the race. Race was shortened by like three laps to the race. 
Oh, she's loose. She's loose. Oh, no. No. And the Menzies. That's horse shit a car 100 laps down taking you out of the damn race. Yeah, let pace car by, let pace car by, let pace car by. Oh. Sorry, dude, if I just popped out of first. Menzies will have to use a quick repairer. And you know what happened. Kayla got loose. Comes up the track. Just gonna go right to the onboard. Too much correction to the right. Paul's Murado is the free pass. Unless Menzies makes a hard turn Thank to the left, he misses it, but there is a man right there who is disappointed that he has to use his quick repair. Hey Chris, can I get a EOL please? So Menzies is in with that quick repair. Did have a couple of drivers come in under the yellow flag. Dylan Clark, Mark Sacosi, Josh Aaron. And Dylan Clark, another fuel only stop. Knows that track position is better than tires here at a track like the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Mark, you want pressing? We're looking, let's look at the pit stops here for Sakosi. That is, that's four tires. There's another four tires. There's four tires. There's two tires. So, so, I would assume he's going different on the rights than the lefts. So he's used three four tires with three sets left. And then he I, he may have one set of rights left. That's what I'm assuming right now. Sakosi with a set of rights remaining. And then he's got probably three sets of um, lefts remaining. That's what I, that's my guess. And Sakosi just topped off on fuel. Menzies and Crow are also in. This is a long stop for Menzies. He may have already used his quick repair. That's a shame. John Crow Sr. also with a long stop. He's already used his quick repair today. So that's how we're looking at the moment. This has been an insane race today, a long one. Chris Control, can I get this uh, exiting closed kit? So that's why I can move. Hey, everybody behind me, I've got a pit. So uh, when we come back around one lap under green, I will be pitting. Hey, Tyler, you're on the outside, bud. Thank you.
steam miscommunication, my bad. Alright. So it should give us about 11 to go in the stage. So Isley is the leader. Selects the outside. Josh Susi is second. Tyler Rush and Aiden Bearline in row number two. Row three, Nick Boyd and Justin Diltz. Row four, Dylan Clark and Ryan Broderick in row five. Mark Sikosi and Josh Aaron. So Paul Smirado was the free pass. He got one of his two laps back. Pace car is in. And we're back to green. Susie again selected the inside. And Bearline caught sleeping. Oh, Bearline may get called for changing lanes oh. here. I'm, this is going to be interesting how they rule this for Bear Line. You can see how he changed lanes before he got back to green. Bump draft to Isley. Goes up another groove higher. We're under yellow. Thanks for the... Uh out. Nick Boyd is spun off of turn car, four. Twelfth yellow of the race that puts Smarado back on the lead lap. Let's see. I I got a passing under a yellow and Boyd got bumped from somebody. It's on the I onboard. Said I, had the pit. I had the pit before we went green. And that was John Crow, I would assume. I don't know, I I didn't that. Nope, that is Dylan Clark with the bumper. I heard him. And a good save by Nick Boyd. Yeah, he definitely said something. Nearly decided to go in the Roval section. Therefore, I, I just had someone in my ear talking, so I might have not heard it. Hey, Chris. Yeah, we'll keep it with you. Can you look and see why I got a black for passing under yellow last caution when I followed exactly what it told me to do on iRacing? How does it put laps down? Lucky dog outside. There's Smirado gets back on the lead lap. 13, change lanes before the start finish line on the previous restart. There they go. You heard the call there. Aiden Bearline penalized for changing lanes. That's a tail end of the line, longest line penalty. And Mr. Bearline will have some fun to do, not only to get back up to the top five, but he's got to go through a lot of slow cars on the track. Oh, we got a crash under yellow. Is that Smeraldo? Oh my goodness. That'll be tail end. Thank you. Sorry about that, Nick. And, uh, I went back and forth and I saw that you keyed up and said that. I just didn't hear you. I heard someone in my ear. Yep, it's good. I still got a pit. Step four.
take a top. Thank you, Josh. Seven four has to pit on green. Seven four has to pit under green. So ready to get back under the green flag. Should be six to go when we get back to the line to begin the stage. Good restart for Susie. Top eight, all Chevrolets. Icely working on rush for P2. Pitting this time, pitting this time. Nick Boyd signals he's coming in this time, uses the low groove. See if there are any issues or not. He's paying to serve a penalty that cannot be cleared. Seems to be the case. Nice. Off of two, look at Sakosi from flipping up to fourth position. He tries to get a run on Tyler Rush, and he's up to third. And now, oh my goodness, could he have a two for one discount? Off of four, Susie breaks the draft, and Sakosi's up to P2. Rush doesn't have anything on the low groove. He's lost it. He's back to P4. Hey, Ryan, if you catch me, buddy, just go low. Here goes Sikosi for the lead. No, nah, man, I'm, I'm just trying to Mark Sikosi from this. Oh, Susie, what a save. Kenny, no. Back to yellow. Care about the oh, no. He was good to go. And then, who was it? Was it Nick Smart? It was John Crow at Gonda Susi. And that will do it for the stage. Susi is in the pits. That may have been his race right there. But what a power move by Mark Sakosi. This guy flipped the scariest flip of the season in stage number one. That will be the end of stage three. So it's the end of stage number three. And everyone's in the pits. So Mark Sakosi, your stage three winner in crazy fashion. Lucky dog coming high.
Fuel only for the number eight. Saving his sets. Ryan Broderick stays out. Now he's had seven pit stops. We'll figure that all out when we come back. But Mark Sikosi, the stage winner here at Charlotte. Let's go back and watch Susie. Oh, Isley got into him. Now he's got it good to go. And then Crow, I don't know what the heck Crow was thinking. We're going to watch Crow's onboard here and see this. It's a barrel line right behind. He slows. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a thing called a brake pedal. And you can easily miss drivers using that brake pedal. Not to call him out, but use your damn brake sometimes. <laughs> Ryan Broderick, the leader, will figure out his pit situation when we come back. Stay with us. Ready to begin. I got it. Thank you. We're ready to begin the final stage here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. We've got under 80 to go. Let's take this opportunity now to thank Open our sponsors Iris. Speed Demon Setups and Graphics, Butt Kicker, Elevated Outdoors, and Affordable SEO and Marketing. Thank you for your entire support of the National Sim Racing League. Next week, we are at Sonoma. Start time, 8.45 p.m. Reset the field. Broderick and Sikosi, row one. Broderick selects the outside line. Row two, Tyler Rush and Justin Diltz. In row number three is Josh Aaron and Aiden Bearline. Row four, Dylan Clark, Paul Smarado. Row five, Nick Boyd and Tyler Isley. Next three cautions. Free pass could go to Tom Perra to try and put 11 on the lead lap. Broderick, the right to fire. Currently on a 50 lap set at the moment. Let's look at his stint, stint lengths currently. You see how he's looking currently at the moment. Sikosi inside. Fresher tires. Help from Rush. Sikosi to the lead.
Rush up to second. Aiden Barreline after the penalty. He's rebounded up to third. Driver in the pits. That's Paul Smirado. Justin Diltz looking for fourth position on Broderick. Everyone pretty much pitted except for the five of Broderick for bonus points. And to get some time out there on the front. For those wondering where Josh Susi is, he's called it a night, even without a quick repair. Correction, he's actually already had a quick repair before the spin. Remember, he was involved in that big one, the biggest wreck of the night on stage number one. Pardon me, that may have been stage number two. I can't recall. It's been a wild night tonight. That is a fact. Diltz by Broderick. Diltz has been quiet so far tonight. He was in the back of the field in stage number one and has made his way in the final stage up into the fourth position. Now can challenge on bear line for third spot. Sakosi all over Tyler Rush. Your closest battle is with Broderick. Josh Aaron goes by, takes away sixth. I think Broderick may have used up all of his sets for the rest of the race. He's got to be careful if he doesn't blow it so he doesn't blow a tire. And he went way up the track, all the way back now to eighth. So Sakosi leads, turn up the volume, and butt kicker crank it up. Good battle about to take place here. Behind them though, Dylan Clark loses another spot to Tyler Isley for seventh position. Those wondering where 21 through 26 are on track, it's Justin Pope 21st, Mark Cook 22nd, William Farmer 23rd, 24th at Fowler, 25th Terry Marinaro, 26th Kayla McCarthy. Hey Paul, go to the inside of me, buddy. I got you. Only one driver in that range is running on track as we've got a battle for the lead. Tyler Rush, Mark Sakosi, no draft from each other. This could help out Justin Dilt. However, though, he's got no draft. Tyler Rush to the point at Charlotte. You too, VP. I got you, man. Next turn. Be 60 laps to go at the line here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. All the drivers likely have one more stop to go. Sakosi continuing to lead. And look at the run Justin Diltz is getting because that top two is side by side. Rush clears to the lead. Sakosi all over that rear end. See what happens off of turn four. Sakosi trying to get the high side to work. That just helps though. Sakosi that just helps though. Rush pull away just the scope. Here comes Stilts on the outside. Got blocked for a moment, top shelf. Tried to look low on Sakosi. He could not get the run at all. Sakosi a little bit tight. Diltz doesn't use it to the advantage. Wants to stay in the pole. You heard that pop downshifted down to fourth. All the way in fourth gear. 
Only guy not in fourth gear is Rush. He's in fifth. Look at the run by Isley. Where'd he come from? He's up to P4 on the track. The top four made their way back up to the lead. So Isley is up to third. Let's see what he does when he catches up to Sakosi and Rush. So a good pass for Isley back on the podium. Has to be careful though. See, I think every, the guy's in second through four. One more wreck, they could be done for the evening. Go behind these drivers. Nick Boyd is on Josh Aaron. That is for sixth position on the track. Listen to this. The drivers that are currently in four through seven, they have each picked up 13 positions in this race. Justin Dill through Nick Boyd, they started 17th through 21st. Aiden Berline in eighth started from 24th position. And they're up on Dylan Clark as Aaron goes wide. I think may, it may have been a net code bumper coming from that 74 of Nick Boyd. So give Boyd sixth position. Let me go back up to that top three. Top four, rather. Tyler Rush, the Tyler and Tyler show, and Isley got up to second position. Nine drivers on the lead lap. Smirado loose off of four. If we get a caution, Paul Smirado would be the free pass car. You see currently a lap down on your screen. Briggs Swope in the seven. Off track. Would assume he got in the grass and got loose off of four. Currently running in P13. Continuing on the front side of the field. Sakosi back a half second. With the top speed here. 177 the top. As he's got a fellow speed demon driver. Oh, for the lead. Rush may have gotten loose off a of turn two and move icely to the point. Starting to get a little bit colder at Charlotte because Isley's taking the race lead. Let's open up a nice gap. Now Rush loses some time. He may have had to let off the gas. And when you let off the gas in a 550 horsepower car, you lose a lot of time. Sakosi goes a groove higher. Tries to get some momentum again off that 24 degree banking. Trying to set this pass up well. At the same time, there is a risk when you go up to the high side in the center of three and four. Justin Diltz closes in just a little bit. Still working close together. This is the best battle on the track. Been a crazy race so far. It has been a legit test of endurance in the World 350. With so many cautions, a couple of big wrecks that took place earlier has put the field down from 26 on the lead lap to just nine. The Speed Demon teammates of Sakosi and Dills just trying to find something and Zakosi a lot more tight, opens the door for that 23 to try and take third position. Can't get anything, they continue to lose a lot of time. So Tyler Isley, your race leader in the World 350. You're not gonna miss a thing, we take you 
side by side. We have just passed a quarter past 11 here on the East Coast here as we Thank welcome her. you back to live coverage of the World 350 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Your race leader currently Tyler Isley with a half second lead on Tyler Rush. Don't miss out next week as we are at Sonoma Raceway, 82 laps for the Sonoma Valley 200. It is the full course circuit at Sonoma Raceway. She has to say correction it is the cup circuit around Sonoma. Let's just don't think we can confirm at all that we are at Sonoma Raceway Cup. But I would assume it is the full circuit. Tyler Isley involved in an accident earlier today as we've got a couple of drivers in pit road, Ryan Broderick and Tom Para. Final stop of the day for Ryan Broderick. But Tyler Isley involved in a wreck earlier today where his car just got loose in turn number two and overcorrected, turning to the right and shot up into the number 13 of Aiden Bearline. Speaking of Aiden Bearline, he is currently on pit road in eighth position. Drivers making their final stops to the race, trying to get that fresher tires. It's going to be very tough because you really need the draft and the 13. Messes up on pit road. This is going to be a longer stop for Aiden. Hey, BP, just letting you know I got a pit this time, buddy. Daniel Menzies lets him know he's going to pit, and that's going to be coming from the apron in the number 25 machine. His car is junk. There was a controversial situation. Kayla McCarthy came back out just for fun, then got loose in turn four, making her way up to the leaders overcorrected into the 25 of Daniel Menzies. So that was a tough break for her. But Isley continues out front, half second lead on this guy, Tyler Rush. Third position, Mark Sikosi, your stage three winner from earlier today. Tyler Rush won stage one, our stage two winner. We'll get to him in just a moment. Justin Dilts from the back to the front in fourth position. There's your stage two winner right there. Dylan Clark running in position number five. In sixth spot, that is Nick Boyd in the 74. And seventh is Josh Aaron. Eighth spot is Paul Smirado in the 57. Ninth is Aiden Bearline. Tenth, Ryan Broderick. Eleventh spot, Daniel Menzies. Twelfth is Tom Para. Thirteenth is Briggs Swope. Fourteenth, Brian Preslar. Out of the race in fifteenth and sixteenth are Jimmy Bart and John Crow Sr. and Josh Susi. Eighteenth position is Kyle Milliken. 19th spot is Alan Crowell. Out of the race in 20th is Nick Smart. Same with Justin Cope. Mark Cook, William Farmer, Ed Fowler. 
That is 20th through 24th. Keila McCarthy, last car on track in 25th. Finishing last tonight will be Terry Marinaro. So Isley continuing to lead. Last stop came on lap 163. So that would be about a 70 lap run. I'm going to check something here real quick. The pit window here is 60 to 64 laps. Lap cars are going hot. I don't know if this is in mind. That is the fuel window from last year when uh, in real life on the NASCAR Cup car Gen 6 machine. So a 60 to 64 lap fuel window. Isley, pretty much everyone on the lead lap pitted on lap 163. So they will have one stop to go. 73, 83, 93, 03, 13. They will be about 10 laps short. So they will need a pit stop. Some drivers, by the way, like Isley, like Rush, and like Sikosi and Dylan Clark. Actually, specifically your top two, they've got one set of tires left for Sikosi and Clark. They may have to take the risk and go fuel only to the end. See that battle for third. Clark gets the advantage in the turn. Sakosi on the straights. 24 degrees of banking here at Charlotte. Daniel Menzies in the pits. We may have had reports that he just crashed earlier on. Side draft from Dylan Clark. The side draft coming from him. As we've got 34 laps to go at Charlotte. Hopefully we do not approach three hours in this race, but it's definitely been a long one. These races usually last just about two hours or so. One and a half to two hours when we are racing in uh, our regular stints. But tonight, over two and a half. Big test of endurance for the drivers here. Dylan Clark cleared Mark Sikosi for third position. Kosey may have possibly used his tires up just a little bit more than the 34 of Dylan Clark. Biggest mover of the race so far. Give credit to Paul Swirado. Been dodging those wrecks pretty well. Currently in 17th. Started from 25th position. So here are the list of drivers that we know are good to go to the end. Highest one right now is Aiden Bearline in that number 13. Currently in 9th. Now here's the thing. He currently has a draft with Ryan Broderick behind him, and that's kind of, when you think about it, your best battle on the track. So we'll just have to see what happens when we cycle through, but because, you know, this is a wide open track, oh, man! That was a hard dodge to the left there, nearly got into Smeraldo. With these two drivers here, they are the highest. They know we know they're good to go to the end, but here is the situation. I see I'm pitting out. When you're on a track that's wide open, if you pit later, if we go to the you're end, dangerous. and you see drivers using taking less fuel in the tank, then that could help out big time. So we'll just have to see what happens. Bearline and Broderick are a lap down. There they are. They're off of turn number two. A lap and a half behind. Let's show you the map. Leaders in turn one and two, that number 17. And there are these guys here. So they are losing a little bit of time compared to the leaders. Let's see, 30 61. They are running faster times though. 30 74 and a 30 76. So they're just about three quarters of a second faster compared to the top two. Let's see these laps here for. Isley and Rush. 31.65, 31.64, nearly a second faster. 18th place car is in Kyle Milliken.
Battle coming up for P5, Dilt and Boyd. Got a good battle for the lead as well, but those two, because they're teammates, Icy and Rush, at this point, I just expect them to work with each other. Then you get to those final laps, then they can race each other. Let's go back to Dilt and Boyd. If we see anyone that's on the lead lap come in, we will focus on them, especially if it's the leader. Dilt's trying to break the draft off of Nick Boyd and lets the 23s coming in. He's coming in this time. Justin Dilt's in for his final stop of the race. It was a 40 second delta between him and Barreline, but you know that's going to go down for sure. Pit road speed. 45 miles an hour here. 45, I think it's actually 50 on the iRacing platform. So Dilts is in. Let's go to your map here. And show you where he cycles through. Does Bearline come by here? We're waiting. It's Bearline right there. There's the pass. So Bearline up to fifth position and Isley is in the pits. Longer stop, over 10 seconds. He's gone, I think he was waiting for Tyler Rush. And he was, 15-27, 14-85. Oh, that was close for Tyler Rush. He may have crossed that blue line. In terms Come of the on. merge situation. There's Bear Lion. Hey, loose, Nick. So Bear Lion's gonna get a huge head of steam. Dylan Clark though comes out ahead, so second through fourth. Ahead of Aiden Bear Lion. They took a shot at it. Did not work, and now second through fourth have fresher tires by about 17 laps. 27 has to come back down. There it is. Coming this time, so watch out. Tyler Rush is penalized for. for an improper merge on the pit exit. And that may end the race for Tyler Rush right there. His chances at winning likely have ended. So I think the penalty there is a pass through for the number 27. So now your leader is Nick Boyd. We know he can't make it to the end with 23 to go. And we will just see what happens. Down to about 30 seconds is the later he pits, he's losing time to Tyler Isley, 2.6 second lead on Dylan Clark. And then Bearline currently, provisionally I would see him is in third. Ryan Broderick is Take up to fourth. I see for the final podium spot, this could be in the hands of Mark Sikosi. With those fresher tires by about 15 to 17 laps on his two adversaries ahead of him. As we compare laps, 30-55 for Sikosi, for Bearline and Broderick, they were in the 31 threes. Gap is about 1.7 seconds. He can definitely make that time up with 21 to go. Nick Boyd, is he out of fuel? Puts Rush in the grass, unless he's using the clutch. Interesting situation there. Gap is down to 26 seconds for Nick Boyd. 
So Tyler Isley alone with the KTS drivers. If Dylan Clark and Aiden Bearline want a shot at this, they're going to have to work together and hook up. Sikosi, by the way, for those wondering, did get by Ryan Broderick, and he's all over Aiden Bearline. Easy pass. And now about to unlap himself to the leader. Don't know if Nick Boyd's trying to save some fuel. He's kept the car in fifth gear. But we know that Nick Boyd cannot make it. The gap is down to 23 seconds. Behind them, Justin Dilt passes Ryan Broderick for the sixth spot. I think right now, if you're Nick Boyd, he is hoping for a late race yellow so he can put and have the fresher tires than Tyler Isley. I think Nick Boyd may have saved an extra set. We can compare the pit stop time. Yes, he has saved an extra set. He's got a 5.8 second stop earlier. He's had six stops so far today. So he does have an extra set pit just in pit case. Pit pit. That were to be a factor. Longest run of the day, no question about it. And it's stuck in a three-wide situation. Could have been critical right there if Nick Boyd had a pit. Down to 19 seconds. Again, he wants a late race yellow. But he can't make sure he's at the final drops. Again, Tyler Isley, the provisional leader, up 2.6 seconds on Dylan Clark. Isley looking for his second win on the season. He hasn't won since the opening Daytona 300. Third in the points coming in. As for Dylan Clark, hoping for a late race yellow. Late goer on the season, his fifth start on the year. Best finish, second, came in his debut at the Chicagoland Speedway. Love to finish that way. Mark Sikosi in third. What a story this would be from flipping to a third place finish. Yellow still hasn't come out yet for Nick Boyd. It's down to 16 seconds. Drivers are continuing to unlap themselves. The free pass would be, without question, Tyler Rush. We'll put nine drivers in a chance at winning this race. Thinking about other drivers here at the moment. Nick Boyd has saved a set. We try and look at other drivers amongst the top nine. Tyler Isley, I don't think, has saved a set. Mark Sikosi, he saved a set. Just looking at those specifically that have gone fuel only. Give me the outside, folks. I think Boyd is the only one that has saved an extra set of tires here. Appreciate it. In case we were to get a yellow flag. So I don't blame him. I don't blame him for the strategy as we've got a battle for sixth. Just give me give me the outside. Josh Aaron gets by. Hey, Jimmy, take the high and one and two. I gotta pick this time. It's by Aiden Bearline. Nick Boyd. Nick Boyd just said he's pitting. So his gambling plan does not work out as the leader comes in and gives up the lead to Tyler Isley this time by. We are 10 minutes out from this race going three, three hours long. So there's Tyler Isley, he'll go by. We'll see if he assumes the lead here, and he does. He'll lead the lap with 11 to go. 3.5 second lead on Dylan Clark in second. Mark Sikosi in third. And Justin Dilts will likely take the fourth spot here. Yes, he will. 
McBoy does feel only on its stop, no tires at all. Surprised he did not go for four tires. Actually, at the same time, it's good decision that he stays out, but he is still hoping for that yellow. But he is the last car on the lead lap at this moment. Gets back, remains on the lead lap. So at this point, he's hoping for a yellow, go in for tires, and then make his way up through the field. I think that's his current plan at the moment. Let's go to another battle here. Josh Aaron with worn tires compared to Justin Diltz. Closing his way on the 23, looking for P4. For Josh Aaron, if he gets that fourth position finish, would tie his best finish, which came on the first round of the season at Daytona in the 300. Closing in big time on that battle. Again, a lot of drivers starting from the back, playing it safe, move their way up to the front, especially after the big wreck we had back in stage two. Eight laps to go in the National Sim Racing League's longest night. I'll be up top. Closing down once again. Okay. And Nick Boyd about to get lapped. Now, that would put him on the free pass. Unless Tyler Rush gets by if we have a late race yellow. Let's go back over here. A couple of other good battles. Ryan Broderick passing Aiden Bearline, sixth position. Only the third start of the season for Broderick and a sixth place finish would be his second best finish. His best finish came in his debut at Kentucky where he finished in fourth. Oh, he's up wide. Nearly got the wall off the corner. Back over to the Aaron Diltz battle and Josh Aaron officially takes away P4. With six to go. Now make it five at the line. From Clark to Sakosi. Seven seconds. But for Dylan Clark, it's a great run for him tonight, no question about it. We'll need a late race caution, that's for sure. Mark Sikosi in the number eight. Already with a win earlier this season, coming at Myrtle Beach. 42, I need to wrap help back here. Also, a run that he wouldn't be disappointed of. Josh Aaron said he's going to need hey, some help for the 42. As. What was that, AA, Ron? You talking to me, bud? No, I was trying to latch on to the 42. Milliken comes in the pits. Alan Crowell also in the pits. A couple of drivers making their final stops, but. Uh, what a great run from Tyler Isley tonight. Even after a spin in stage number two or three, whatever it was, uses his quick repair from an overcorrection in turn two. And this time by, he's three miles away from winning the longest race of the season. One driver went off track just a moment ago. That was Milliken in the grass and the Martini 42 in 16th position. Hey, after starting late, it's a good run for him tonight. We'll check how many laps he led. Still, do you lose it all? When post race comes. Icely off a of turn four. The flag he's been wanting to see ever since he came back out as the leader. White flag, final lap for Tyler Isley. Uh, go high, one, two, high. 
will be his second win of the season. Again, first win at the season Thanks, opener at Daytona. He's been trying to win. Came so close at Auto Club. Came so close at Chicagoland and Kentucky. Off of three and four, Tyler Isley will take the win in the NSRL's longest night at Charlotte. Clark second, and how about Mark Sikosi? I told you there was more coming. Oh man, too many I lost at the end there, man. That, that felt good. Dills, I was trying to push up there to Aaron, man. A lot of great finishes for a lot yeah, of great drivers. Cool. Dude, just didn't have it. I kept getting. Got to be the glasses in the harness, man. The sunglasses in the harness. Yes, sir. Good win. So Tyler Isley lights them up. Finally gets to do some donuts. Good to see him back in victory lane. And he's probably going to burn that sucker down, that's for sure. Get your top three here in just a moment. Appreciate you all coming on out to the stream tonight. Again, our next race of the season next week at Sonoma. Another road course race that I know for sure will be interesting. Just waiting for one more driver, then we can begin the proceedings. And I think this is a KTS burnout here. There's McCarthy in the 24 who joined in late. Those are the only two doing synchronized donuts, having some fun. All right, as they light them up, let's talk with Mark Sikosi, who had probably the craziest story of the night. You went from the wildest flip in NSRO history to winning stage three and then finishing third. How crazy was that race for you as a whole? Yeah, it was pretty wild. Uh, I didn't expect to. Uh, I don't know what happened there on the, through the travel. I don't know if we got three wide. And, yep. But, uh, yeah, it was a wild, wild wreck. Um, we kept getting the car better and better every run. Um, Tyler just, he, he had another, him and Clark, they had a, another level there at the end. But uh, we yeah, tried we getting them there on the strategy, line. but uh, <laughs> didn't work out. But, yeah, we, we were fighting a, a tight car. The car was going tight all night, snapping loose on exit. Um, yeah, we, we kept getting it better and better. But, uh, I, I mean, I'll take a third. Third, uh after a long grueling race like that, I mean, it's, it feels pretty good. How about from your perspective on the flip? I mean, I, th I have a feeling uh, you got dizzy on that. <laughs> I'm dizzy to begin with. I'm dealing with a lot of stomach issues. But, uh, yeah, that uh, wasn't uh, – I didn't know if we were going to recover from that. You, you always drive a little more conservatively when you, you know, are involved in something like that, not even halfway in the race. So, uh Made me a little nervous, um, but uh, we uh, kind of gave him the field out there towards the, the second half of the, the race. So it, it seemed like we were we were a little safer there uh, with only maybe half the cars running there at the end. Yeah, definitely. Uh, crazy race of endurance for sure. Who do you want to give shout outs to tonight? I got to thank uh, my teammates, uh, uh, Justin Diltz, uh, Mark Cook. Uh, Justin Colt. All oh, had really good cars. Uh, Dilts had a really strong run tonight. Uh, I was proud of that. Um, I think of our sponsors, uh, Speed Demon Setups, Graphics, uh, Affordable SEO Marketing. Uh, Got to thank everybody showing up tonight. Uh, decent sized field. We had a couple new guys tonight. Uh, uh, it was pretty fun all in all. Absolutely, for sure. Nice run tonight, man. We'll talk to you next week. Or talk to you right, tomorrow, thanks, actually. Marty. Yep, yep, see you tomorrow. You too. So your third place finisher there, Mark Sikosi. Let's go to second place finisher, Dylan Clark. Dylan, nice run for you tonight, man. Picked up a stage win. Uh, just walk us through your race. Uh, really just 
this C4 Motorsports uh, Nitro Toyota Camry was really, really fast on the long run. And if I didn't have that arrow damage, I really think I could have ran down Tyler there at the end. But uh, a couple of those wrecks, I got 20 seconds of optional repairs, and after a while, that kind of adds up. And I fell behind, got logged in traffic, and really just tried to claw my way back to a top three. I was not expecting a top three, but all in all, it was a good day, and came back looking forward to uh, Sonoma next week. Absolutely. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Uh, I got to thank the C4 Nitro, just really everyone associated with my eye racing. Um, James Morris gave me one hell of a uh, spot tonight, and uh, just everyone that helps me out, my parents for giving me this awesome setup, and uh, Nitro for picking me up. All right, man. We'll let you go. Nice run tonight. Thank you. Have a good Dylan Clark finishing in second spot. Now, time to go to victory lane. He's been away for this one for a while since the Daytona 300. Tyler Isley is in victory lane. Tyler, welcome back. It's about time and well earned. Yeah, we got the right number on her this time. So, uh, thankfully, uh, thankfully, we could park it in, in victory lane with the number 17 this time. Uh, just what a race obviously some some misfortune in the middle middle portions with uh with Menzies and then uh later on with with my own teammate and Josh so hopefully he's hopefully he's proud we at least got it for him um I, I hated the circumstance I think it was just a net code situation but all in all a really good day we bought a really really fast uh KTS Chevy Camaro uh CDH designs just Really, really appreciate it for my for my team. I had li literally zero practice coming in tonight, so uh, really just a, a lot of luck. Well, this seems like this seems like a track that favors you. Of course, you won at Daytona, which is wide open, full throttle, and I mean, while early on when we get into a long run, you got to let off the gas for just a split second and boom back on. This seems like a track that favors you because at these 550 intermediates, you're going wide open. Yeah, uh, we've had a lot of speed here, specifically, I, I mean, our whole team really has. I think it's been pretty clear the last few weeks. We, we've had a lot of speed at these mile-and-a-half, two-mile tracks that, that do require a lot of a lot of wide open, a lot of draft time. Thankfully, that's something that suits my style, but, um, I mean, I, I just a lot of misfortune and bad luck at the end of these races or in the middle of these races, it kind of throws me to the back, and I got to – got to regroup and, and just hope that I can pull off a top 10 or a top five in some cases. Um, it's just, like I said, it feels really good to get the monkey off my back, finally get a win somewhere that's not Daytona. Obviously, it, they race the same, but there, there's so many different intricacies to to what we had to do tonight. And it, this, in Charlotte, it was a really, really fun track to drive. And I'm, like I said, I'm just thankful, almost at a loss for words, at, at how, uh, how that all came together tonight. Absolutely. What happened there as well when you spun out? Did your car just get loose there in turn two and then you overcorrected? Yeah, I had some damage because I got pushed up into the wall by, uh, I, honestly, I don't I don't know what was going on. I, I just know I got shoved up into the wall after getting blocked like three or four times in the previous two laps. And then once that happened, it, it, we kind of lost all control of the car. And, and then I, I don't really remember what happened, honestly. Um, after that, I just know that I ended up in the wall and had to had to take the fast repair. And I thought that at that point we were thought we were in trouble and just kind of thankful. Like I said, I got to thank my teammates, uh, Ty, the other Tyler, Tyler Rush, and uh, Josh Susie and 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 Kayla when she came in. They kind of kind of calmed me down, and got me back level headed and and ready to go and get back at it. And so I needed. I, I just like I said, I don't think I could do half of what's been done this season and be able to be where I'm at in points and have the two wins without the, those guys. So I'm just really thankful to have a great team around me. And, and obviously we bring fast cars every week. We just, I just haven't been able to put it together myself or I make stupid mistakes. And thankfully I, I made my dumb mistakes when I still had some time to make up for it and got it done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, finally, no, uh, next week, uh, Sonoma just, what are your expectations for that? 
I love road course racing. I, I obviously I missed last week. I was actually ironically in Charlotte for the uh, World of Outlaws World Finals. Oh, I'm uh, jealous. I'm jealous over there. I'm officially so, jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it was in the cars that we go to Charlotte on Wednesday, and I get the win. But um, you know it. I love road course racing. I, I may not be the best at it, but I, I think it's fun. A top five would be pretty nice, though. I know I know a lot of guys down there because of the Super Dirt Car Series, so you got to watch that. I'm officially jealous. That's on my bucket list next year. Yeah, it was a really good time, especially they're moving up to four four nights next year. So, But, yeah, like I said, uh, quick shout-out. I do want to, again, thank my my, uh, my guy Preston at CDH Designs. He uh, puts all my paint schemes together, and uh, – Really cool to get get in victory lane officially with him on the uh, with his sponsor and his name on the car. So yeah, all right, man. We'll let you go. Nice job tonight. Congrats. Appreciate it. Thank you. Tyler Isley finally takes home his second win of the season. Let's give you your official results from tonight. So your top ten: Tyler Isley, Dylan Clark, Mark Sakosi, Josh Aaron, Justin Diltz, Ryan Broderick, Aiden Bearline. Nick Boyd, Tyler Rush, Tom Para. How about Para? Top 10 finish after all he's been through this season. Uh, Aiden Bearline, nice run. Same with uh, Ryan Broderick, Justin, Josh Aaron. A lot of drivers that you don't really expect in the top 5, top 10. Missing their way through the big one. Uh, getting involved in less accidents tonight, less damage. Uh, even if they had to use a quick repair. Getting a great finish. Tyler Rush, tough break. Had a great chance at a second place finish. Josh Soucy. Had a fast car tonight, that's for sure. Uh, Daniel Menzies ran inside the top five a lot tonight. Uh, a lot of drivers with some absolute uh, misfortunes from tonight. Uh, over here on the other end of the grid, uh, Mark Cook, I know he was very frustrated. Same with William Farmer. And that's going to do it. And let's end this broadcast before the clock, clock strikes midnight, that's for sure. Next week, Sonoma, 8.45 p.m. start time right here. On the National Sim Racing League Facebook page and twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. Shout out to all of our fine sponsors of the National Sim Racing League. Speed Demon Setups and Graphics, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Elevated Outdoors, and Butt Kicker. From everyone at the National Sim Racing League, our main guy, Mark Sakosi, and our air traffic controller, as always, Chris Lynn. Marty Sakala signing things off. Tyler Isley, his second win of the season in the World 350, the longest night for the National Sim Racing League. Thank you all for joining us. So long from Charlotte.